Hello everyone, how's it going? Today's video is going to be about running Windows on the Valve Steam Deck and basically why you'd want to do this and how it holds up and stuff like that. And I'll tell you kind of why I am using this and how exactly I am using it. Um, first, I just want to say that you really shouldn't use Windows primarily on the Steam Deck. Um, that's just my opinion, of course. I know that there are plenty of people that do actually use Windows on the Steam Deck as their primary OS, and they just forgot about Steam OS, and they don't care, and that's great. And if that works for them, then that's great, you know. But for me, using Windows on a handheld like this is definitely not going to be a great experience for a lot of things. Um, so I use SteamOS primarily, but there are definitely some use cases for installing Windows, and I'll, I'll show you that here. Um, so first, I have these games here that don't exactly work that well on SteamOS, or don't work at all. Um, Age of Empires, I was having this weird issue where it just, games just disconnect on me, and it doesn't happen on Windows. So it's really strange, I'm not really sure why, like the game works fine, but for some reason everything, all the games just disconnect after a few minutes. I'm not really sure, and I haven't tested it recently, so maybe that was fixed in an update or something, but uh, yeah, really weird there. Another game is, uh, don't laugh, Battlefield 2042. Um, this was on sale and my, my buddy had asked me about it and if I had played it recently and he started playing it and actually gifted it to me on Steam. They are like, you know what, I'll, I'll give it a try. And, you know, surprisingly, it's actually not too bad. I'm not going to go on a, on a tangent on that, but it's not too bad anymore. There's still problems, but I, I actually have been having fun with it. So um, another one here, Call of Duty, obviously doesn't work on SteamOS. Um, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, the uh, it does work if you use Proton GE, but the offline, or the, excuse me, the online doesn't work because the anti-cheat isn't enabled for SteamOS, uh, as well as Dragon Ball The Breakers and Xenoverse 2. It's kind of the same deal there. Modern Warfare 3 does work, but there's an issue where, for some reason, you can't you can't connect to the online servers at all, just on SteamOS. It does work on Windows, so that's why I have it installed here. Um, Halo Infinite on SteamOS, you have graphical glitches when you're playing and stuff like that. Definitely not ideal. And then I have Jet Set Radio Future here. Um, I might make another video on this in the future, um, but if you saw another video I made about running Jet Set Radio Future on the Steam Deck, uh, I was running it through CXBX Reloaded and uh, then using Wine through Lutris to basically run it through SteamOS, and it worked, but I was coming across issues where the game would freeze. So I actually deleted that tutorial because I, I was coming across that and a few other people told me they had that issue as well. Um, so it seems to be a common thing. I'm not really sure what the issue is. So I'm gonna make a new video about this and different ways you can run Jet Set Radio Future. Um, but I'm just running it on Windows right now because that seems to work the best. So running Windows will give you access to all these games here and other ones. Destiny 2 is another big one uh, that have anti-cheat that isn't supported on SteamOS. They just won't allow it to run on SteamOS. Um, so that's obviously a big thing there. And all of these games work pretty well. Battlefield 2042 can be a little hit or miss, uh, depending on how big the map is. But a lot of the smaller maps and regular sized maps do work fairly well. Um, so game compatibility is definitely a, a big plus there. Now, there's a few other reasons why you might want to run Windows. And that's just if you want to use this as a productivity device um, connected to a monitor and, and whatnot. Um, I actually have Game Maker Studio installed on this here, and um, it's it works pretty well. And you know, if you want to use this type of thing, uh, or if you want to use this for for that type of thing here, it's it's totally doable. You could make the Steam Deck your primary. Uh, computing device if you really wanted to. You could browse the web pretty easily, uh, you know, stuff like that. So if you wanted to, of course it's not letting me scroll. Um, 
if you wanted to use this as a um, a productivity device or just your main device, you can do definitely do that. So that's that's another plus with using Windows. Now, why would you not want to use Windows or use it sparingly? Um, of course, you're dealing with Windows, so you're going to be dealing with weird bugs. And I'm going to try and reproduce a bug that I come across here. So I have my Steam Deck set to go into hibernation mode when I press this button here. Uh, normally, by default, it goes into sleep mode. And you'd think that would be okay, but sleep mode actually doesn't turn your device off all the way. It uh, kind of functions like a, a console, really, where, um, for instance, a Nintendo Switch. You press the power button, it goes into sleep mode, things still happen in the background. Games are updated, um, games continue to download in the in the uh, in sleep mode as well. And that's kind of how this is here. If you have a game downloading and you want it to continue downloading, sleep mode does continue the download. But the thing is, is that it keeps running. It doesn't turn off from what I understand, unless it's maybe isn't being used for, for quite a while. But um, I'll cover this up here. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter, but um, here we go. So yeah, I was able to reproduce this bug pretty easily and it does happen quite often. So. Coming back from, um, and of course, Steam just crashed right there. Um, but coming back from hibernation mode into big picture uh, produces that little image that you saw. So there's just little bugs like that that kind of mar the experience. Um, it's 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 minor, I would say. You're not going to experience things like that super often, especially if you have the drivers installed and all that. Um, it's, you're gonna just have little issues here and there, little bugs. So I'd recommend just not even using big picture mode in Windows, honestly, and just keeping this interface here, and then just using the touchpad for the mouse, because it the mouse does work fairly well with the touchpad here. So um, yeah, I'd recommend staying away from big picture mode for the most part, if you're planning on going into hibernation mode or sleep mode or whatever, because you might see some bugs like that. I've seen another bug where it just doesn't even load and I have to completely restart the deck. So definitely not the most stable experience, but at the end of the day, you're you're running Windows on a device that was never really intended on running Windows. Of course it is a PC, so you can do whatever you want with it, and Valve provided the drivers for it, which is very nice of them. But like I said, at the end of the day, it was really designed for SteamOS, and that's where all the updates are going. You're not really seeing a whole lot of updates on the driver side from Valve as, as far as Windows goes, just the bare minimum stuff that you're going to be seeing. All the other updates will be coming from Windows. And another issue with that, if you if you if any of you guys have been using Windows on the Steam Deck for the past year, then you may have come across a bug where um, one of the Windows updates basically broke the audio driver and would cause blue screens whenever you would try to install it if you're doing a fresh install. And I think it happened for people that had it already installed as well. So Valve had to go in and, and push an update for that specific audio driver to basically fix that. Um, and it took them a few weeks, I think um, over a month, I could be wrong, but it took quite a while to get that resolved which basically left a lot of people who updated to, to the, that latest Windows version, um, basically left them with no resolution until Valve was able to do that. And you can't blame Valve because they're not made aware of things like that. I think somebody just pointed out pointed it out on Twitter. I, I think it may have been the Fox actually who pointed it out to one of the, the Steam OS developers. And they said they would look into it. And I think after that's when, when a when they started working on the, the actual fix for it. But that's something you're going to run into. You're not going to get those Valve updates very often. You'll get Steam updates, obviously, um, but you're not going to be getting those uh, the OS-level updates like you get with Steam OS. Uh, you know, sometimes they even increase performance and different, different things like that. So you're not getting any of that when you're running Windows. So the most ideal situation for running, you know, I pro probably should, not sure why I turned off the deck like that, but uh, the most ideal situation for running Windows is having a dual boot setup. And I'm going to make a separate video on how to do this because 
It's pretty easy, but there's a few things to keep in mind. Um, you can use a boot manager if you want, but I just use the built-in one because honestly, it's it's the most simple for me. And it seems to not break whenever there's some sort of BIOS update. So um, this is kind of how I have it set up. I can go in and choose between Windows or Steam OS and then just go between the two. And I have a, a large majority of my games installed on Steam OS because they all run fairly well there. And then for those few games that just won't work on Steam OS, uh, whether it's the anti-cheat or anything else, for whatever reason they just won't work, then I have, um, I have the Windows partition there set up and ready to go. Uh, so if you find this useful, um, or if you're interested in, let me turn on the brightness here, holy cow. If you're interested in um, doing this, I'm gonna have a video coming up pretty soon here on how to set this exactly the same as how I have it set up. And it's, it, like I said, it's pretty easy to do. So I'm gonna have that video going out pretty soon here and you can you can watch that if you're interested. But I'm not gonna go on too much longer. Uh, I, Windows is pretty straightforward. I'm sure you've all used it and using it on the Steam Deck is pretty straightforward as well. But again, I'm gonna just reiterate, I, I would strongly, dis, uh, strongly uh, discourage you from using Windows as your primary OS. Because at the, at the end of the day, Steam OS is amazing in my opinion, and if you if you want just the gaming handheld PC experience, then you can use Windows by itself, and you'll probably be okay. Um, but if you really want the the pure Steam Deck experience, I would highly recommend dual booting. So that way, you like I said, you have the Steam OS. You can use that primarily. Most games should work on that. And then for the few games that don't work on that, Call of Duty, Battlefield, um, you can use your Windows installation and run those games there, and they should work pretty well too. So you can get the best of both worlds, and that's really why the Steam Deck is just so awesome. And I know you can dual boot on other devices too, obviously, but um, it's just really easy to do here on the Steam Deck, and if you have some time to set it up and if you're interested in doing it, I recommend it because it really is a... Um, the best way to get the most out of your deck so you can play basically any game that's come out for the most part so yeah i'm gonna leave it here guys if you have any questions comments concerns let me know uh, but that is everything i will see you guys later peace